I'll just get involved in Psalms chapter 20 and go over there and see what happens. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Blessed be the holy name of Christ the King. Amen. I need to wipe these glasses off a little more. <clears throat> Glory to God. Psalms chapter 20. The title of this message this evening is, it's actually part three of what we've been talking about, but the title of it is, I Will Remember. I Will Remember. But it's kind of got a subtitle, The Name. The Name of God, or the Name of Jesus. So what you want to put in there. So that thought where the name is concerned is going to come up quite a bit as we go through this. But... Uh, <clears throat> It's that name, folks. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ is what gets gets you gets you victorious through any given twenty four hours. You know that. Yes. It's the name. Uh, the devil really don't uh, get too excited about hearing your name, but you mentioned the name of Jesus, and he got nervous Amen. because he still remembers. I don't know who wrote that song, and I don't remember all that song, but that thought was embodied. The devil still remembers. He remembers what happened on that cross. He remembered Jesus spoiled him and made a show of him openly, triumphing over him. And then he didn't, you know, didn't make two circles to turn around and gave you and I his victory over the devil. He said, just take my name and, and police this world. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Begin with your living room, your front yard, and your community, but police the world with the name of the Lord. Yes. Glory to God. Take what hurts and use the name on it. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 20, we'll just start at verse 1. <clears throat> he said, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Well, that's a, that's a pretty good thought in itself, you know that? Yeah. The name of God, uh, the name of the God of, of the God of Jacob, defend thee. Mm -hmm. We can try to defend ourselves in times of trouble. You know, in the days when David penned these thoughts, and, 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 and as you read them, his trouble was people as a rule. It was just other people that come against him and continually trying to kill him. Well, people, you know, we love people. We just go ahead and look over their faults and see their need, you know, and we just go ahead and love people and be merciful to people. But it's the devil behind what those people are doing. Yes. Amen? Yes. And so we take the name of Jesus and kind of, like, kind of like the Lord did Peter. I mean, Peter said something dumb. and said, the Lord jumping all over Peter. He said, Satan, I rebuke you. Get behind me. You say it's not the things of God, but the thing of men. And so we just go ahead and, and, and look at the source of the problem and rebuke that with the name. Amen. Amen. The name of the God of Jacob, defend thee. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Well, that's a pretty interesting thought. All I got to say, where's the sanctuary? Well, you know, we're sitting in a in a sanctuary. You know, we built this thing this year, and we, we call it a sanctuary. <clears throat> and the sanctuary that David is referring to is the is the that tent actually that he put up on Mount Zion, and they built a they built a temple a little later over there. But uh, the Bible tells you, you and I, First Corinthians chapter three, verse sixteen. Know you not that your body is the temple? Yes. Y'all ever read that? Yes. Your body is the temple, and if there's a temple, there's a sanctuary in it. Christ in you, your hope of glory. And if he's not in you, you have no hope of glory. But if he is in me, he's in the sanctuary. Amen. It is from there my help comes. Amen. It's out of here that he speaks to me. It's from within where he, he <laughs> you know, those answers show up. Amen. Glory to God. And so we just cater to the sanctuary. We bless the sanctuary. Somebody said, my prayer don't get above my head. Well, they're not supposed to. They don't seem like they get above the ceiling. They're not supposed to. They're going the wrong direction anyway. They need to go toward the sanctuary. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I just don't think, I just don't feel like God hears me. Well, he, holler me, that ain't going to get it done. I mean, you can whisper the name of Jesus and he can hear you in the sanctuary. Yes. On the inside of you. Dr. Hagin told a story one time. He said there's an old farmer down in North Texas somewhere that he told where it was at. But everybody in the whole community knew this old gentleman. And when they had a problem of some kind that they couldn't come up with an answer, they'd go hunt him up and get him to pray for him and pray about the need. Well, he said he could be out in the field plowing somewhere. And others said, Jeff, he just stopped, tied the reins to the plow. And he said, well, I'll be right back. And he went, he'd go to the front porch of his house, had a rocking chair there. And he'd sit down in that rocking chair and he'd just kind of lean back and rock a little bit for about three or four, you know, five minutes or so. And he says, well, okay, I got it. And he'd go out there and tell me what the answer was. But he got it out of the sanctuary. Yes. yes. Got it out of his innermost man, innermost being in here. Yes. 
And there's where your answers are. We need to learn to cater to, listening to, become sensitive to, of God inside us. They told us in Bible school, become God inside minded. God inside minded. Just go around thinking about it all day, you know, all day long. God is in me. Smith with words of standing. He put that three piece suit on, just just get all dressed up, you know, and stand in front of the mirror. And he looked at it and said, God lives in that suit. <laughs> God's walking around in that suit. <clears throat> well, God's walking around in you. Yes. Hallelujah. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strength and, and strengthen thee out of Zion. Glory to God. That's where your strength is. That's where your strength comes from, out of the sanctuary in you. Many of you have heard me tell the story, but I'll tell it again for purposes of evening. Years ago, I was driving a truck for American Freightways, and, and uh, I hadn't been working for them too awfully long. And, but the hours they wanted me to drive was from dark to daylight. Well, I was kind of accustomed to about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night going to sleep somewhere. And here they're telling me to stay up all night till daylight. Because daylight the next morning, I'm supposed to be at some destination, some terminal, somewhere. They tell me to go get in the motel and sleep all day and get back in that truck, drive again all night the next night. Well, my body clock didn't allow for that. I had, I mean, I'm, I'm going to sleep for the night and, and been awake all day. Well, here they're telling me to sleep all day and be awake all night. Well, I wasn't doing that. And after just trying to stay awake all night for a long time, you know, and I'm just fatigued and tired and not rested and I just... I got to the point of exhaustion, and I was driving that truck on a real crooked, skinny road. There was no shoulder. They just just asphalt and the water ditch. You leave that leave that road, you're gonna crash. And there was a real skinny, winding, narrow road, and and it was a and it was a lot of truck traffic went over there. It was like way in the night, and I got to the point where I I can't go any farther, but I can't stop. You just almost have a panic moment when you realize you're having that kind of a problem. You can't go, I can't go, I can't go any farther, but I can't stop. Because if I stop running on these blind curves, somebody's going to run over. And right in the middle of that, the Spirit of God spoke up on the inside of me from the sanctuary that's within. And he quotes a part B of Joel 3.10, if y'all know what that is. They said, let the weak say I am strong. When I heard that, I mean, I was so tired and so fatigued, because in my mind, at least where I live at, it, it takes a measure of energy and effort to use faith, to believe the Word. But I was so tired, I thought, I can't, I don't have the strength to believe anything. When I heard that, I said, yeah, right. <laughs> That's not really a proper way to respond to God. I've been repenting over that for 30 years, about how long ago it's been. But direct, I, I thought about that for just a minute, I thought, well, God said, let the weak say I am strong. And so directly, here's my little, my little confession of faith. I said, all right, Lord, I'm saying, in Jesus' name, I'm strong. And it didn't have any more energy behind it than that. I was just trying to hold on the steering wheel, keep falling over on the floor. When I said that, right there, something began to buzz, all I can tell you. If you've ever seen heat coming off an asphalt highway in the summertime or off of a kitchen cook stove or a heating stove, this radiation coming off that, that's what started right there. And it went out every limb. Every arm, my legs, my toes, my nose, and my ears, and I don't know what all. <laughs> Everything but my eyes. It didn't affect my eyes. My eyes were still tired. But I got so energized that I was shifting that truck to neutral trying to find a higher gear when I was already in high gear. I was ready to go to work. But the answer came from the, from the sanctuary. And that sanctuary is in you. Wherever the king is, there's a sanctuary for him. There's a holy of holies for him. Isn't that right? You just need to focus on it and be aware of that and, 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 and know that when you pray, that's where he's listening from. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Daniel made this statement. He's right. He said, the spirit of man is in the midst of man. You look on Mount Calvary and there's three crosses up there and Jesus is in the midst of them. One of them's acting like the flesh and the other's acting like the soul. But he said, listen guys, here's how the spirit man lives. We're going to die and we're going to get over it and we're going to raise from the dead and the world's going to be good. I mean, he just, there's a picture of spirit soul and body on the Mount Calvary if you want to try to say Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 3 said, remember all thy offerings. David's got a problem. He's having trouble. He's wanting God to help him. He said, God, just remember all the offerings I've made to you. Just remember all them alms I've given. Well, you can run over to about the 10th chapter of Acts and you find where that same thought comes up again when Cornelius is, and an angel come to visit him. Y'all remember that story? And, 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 uh, 
uh, this angel says, Thy alms have come up for a memorial before the Father. God remembers your giving. Yes, He does. <coughs> He remembered those givings to him when you did it from your heart. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And then there's something called burnt sacrifices. Except by burnt sacrifices. Well, sometimes you ain't got but ten dollars. You just felt like he wants you to give nine of it. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord. That's a sacrifice, you know that. Sometimes yes. giving is a sacrificial thing. And I think that's what the Bible is referring to when he says burn offerings. Of course, in the Old Testament, it's literally a burnt animal, a burnt you know, cow, ox or some kind. But he's telling the Lord to remember that burnt offering. Not at one time, she would just, she would just do memorial, give an offering just a memorial on purpose. Lord, this is a memorial. She gives something. She said, this is a memorial for my sons. This is a memorial for my husband. This is a memorial for my marriage. Everybody knows me. <laughs> She, she knew her marriage certainly needed a memorial of some kind. <laughs> well, it worked pretty good. But I remember back when that was, you know, about that time when she was doing that, Clean, our youngest son, was working a freight dock out there from American Freightways in Tulsa. And I'd be going through Tulsa nearly every night, so I'd have that little bit of time I could spend with him before I went on to somewhere else. But I went in there one night, and uh, he's on this forklift with his head just like this. And just white as a sheet. I mean, he's trying to drive that forklift. He couldn't raise his head up. I think he hurt his. I think he said he hurt himself in the gymnasium, or something. I don't know what it was. But uh, anyway, I called out and she said she'd pray. But I said, listen, I think I got some aspirins out in the truck. I'll go out there and get them. And I went and got him two or three and brought them back to him. And and uh, <clears throat> he took off on that forklift doing this. And about thirty minutes later, I looked out there and he just sitting up just as straight, you know, and had all his color back and just getting with it out there. And I went up there to see him, and I said, your neck all right? And he said, yeah, them aspirins didn't do it. <laughs> he said, the aspirin didn't have nothing to do with it. But not as before the Lord talking about her memorial that she had put before the Father. It's just a good idea, folks, to just put as much of a memorial before you know, the Father as you can get. If you have children or grandchildren or a husband or any kind of relationship, keep a memorial up there. And as David did, remind God of it. He said, Lord, remember it thy offerings that have been given to him. Y'all see that in the Bible? Yes. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. Verse 5. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God will be set up our banners. That says banners in the King James. Now, you know, it says a flag. Uh, and most of us know what a banner is. But for New Testament purposes, I don't know too many people that come into churches waving flags. A lot of them do. They have these... Uh, Interpreta interpretation dance and that sort of thing, whatever they call that. And they got flags and that sort of thing. But the banner that you wave where you and God are concerned is your testimony. Hallelujah. Hold that testimony up before God. Remind God. I mean, hallelujah. The Lord, I, I got, there's a verse in the Old Testament. I don't have it in front of me here tonight, but there's a verse over here in the Old Testament. It, it, the, the, the writer admonishes the people of the day not to remove the old landmarks. How many of you ever read it? Y'all ever read that? Yeah. Don't remove all the old landmarks. Well, in those days, they, something called claim jumpers, I guess it is. They go out there and move the rock and, I don't know, and cut a tree down. It's all they had for landmarks was just something like that. And uh, the, what those landmarks did, it defined the area where their life, where they live, inside those landmarks. I said, Lord, what's that got to do with us in the, you know, today? I said, nobody's moving landmarks. And, he said, your testimony is your landmark. He said, don't remove I mean, think back to the time when you had an experience with God. You'll forever remember that cross. That was a landmark. Amen. You remember when you got saved. Well, I mean, I had a born-again experience. I don't know what you got. Well, I had, a, <laughs> I had a moment. There was a state grove in the ground where I live. And, 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 and I've been healed. I've, been, I've had God to speak to me. And I've had great moments going through the years with God. And every one of them is a landmark and they define the spiritual life that I live. Amen. Well, the devil's got his job. He's out there trying to get those land. He'll come to you and say, oh, that wasn't this and that wasn't that. What, he, what he's trying to do is remove the landmarks. So that you don't know who you are and you don't know where you are and you don't know what you've got in God. You don't even know if God likes you or not. <laughs> don't remove the landmarks. Keep the banner waving. Keep the testimonies going. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
We will set up our banners and the Lord will fulfill all thy petitions. Y'all see that in the Bible? Yes. And know that I, the Lord, saveth his anointed. Know that I, the, excuse me, not know, but now, now know I that the Lord saves his anointed. And he will hear thee from his holy heaven. And with the saving strength of his right hand. Well, you know, Jesus is the saving strength of his right hand. I mean, he's the son, he's the son of the right hand, Jesus is. But this says, now I know, now know I that the Lord saveth his anointing. Hallelujah. I got it here in front of me someplace. I'm going to hunt it up. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. I'll find it here directly. Well, look at 1 John chapter 2. We'll just go over and hunt it up without the notes. I don't know how I lose notes like that. I write them down and they vanish. 1 John chapter 2. Blessed be God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be God. First John, chapter 2, verse 27. David said, Now I know that he saves his anointed. Did, did we not just read that? Yes. First John chapter 2, verse 27 says, But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. Well, if the Word of God says He saves His anointed, then He saves you. Yes. Because you're anointed. Yes. Amen? Yes. That anointing is in you. Yes. It's in there to teach you and to help you and to lead you and to guide you. But it's, it's in there to help empower you for ministry. Yes. Glory to God. It's, that anointing is in you in the person of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, to help you get successfully through this life from the cross to the rapture. Yes. <laughs> we ain't going to the grave, okay? Ain't nobody going down this church. We're going to, we're going to the rapture. But the Bible says, now, now, now know I that he saves his anointed. Well, if he saved his anointed in the Old Testament, the Old Testament, the one that had the anointed was a prophet, priest, and king, okay? And a, and a, and a work of day people, the blue collar folks of the Old Testament, all they could do is stand back in awe and admire this, this, this touch of God on the leadership's life. And they were, you know, awed at that. If they needed help, they'd go hunt a prophet up and get the priest to pray. But bless God, in this New Testament, this anointing has come to every one of us. The anointing is on you and it's in you. How is it? Amen. Glory to God. That's what got Paul so much trouble. He went around telling everybody's got the anointing. They said, You're crazy. On that, on those, on those you know, you know, those, those really great holy people in the temple. They're the only one who has this anointing. Well, that's me and you. That's <laughs> you and I. Amen. Don't get anything out of this. Glory to God. The anointing is in you. It's on you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm chapter 20. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory to God. Well, let me back up just a little bit. We're talking about those banners and, and, our, and our testimonies that glorify the Lord. Hold your place here and look at first uh, our second Thessalonians. Got something we need to read over there right quick. I'll get past it here if I don't slow down and look at it. 2 Thessalonians. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Well, that's 2 Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I hate it when I just lose what I'm looking for in the Bible. Yeah. Finally found it. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11. It says, Wherefore also we pray. If Paul prayed this prayer, you can pray this prayer. It's a Holy Spirit anointed prayer. There's several of them in the, in the New Testament. This is one of them. Yes. Wherefore also we pray always for you, that our God will count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. If God gets his way in the life of every born again child of God, there will be a work of faith with power. If he gets his way in our, in our lives, there'll be a work of faith. There'll be a testimony 
of the, of the, of the working of, of the faith of God in our lives. I mean, if we're, if we're if anything at all. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified. It's those power testimonies. I had cancer, now I don't. I had diabetes, and now I don't. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. The doc told me five years ago I had diabetes. He wrote me a prescription. He said, take these pills and get on this diet, and life worked pretty good for you. Well, I took them pills home. I set them on this shelf, and uh, that diet, if you was... You know, could read Greek or something. You know, you could understand how that thing works. I, it made no sense to me at all, so I threw that away and just created my own diet. I need to lose weight anyhow. But anyway, that bottle of pills he gave me, I still got about 10 of them still left in that bottle, and it's been five years ago. I just on purpose take one every now and then, but I just load up on sugar. I thought, well, I'll give them a pancreas a break. I'll just take one of them pills. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. They called me one day and said, well, your test results turned out pretty good. They said, just keep taking your meds and stay on your diet. I said, I ain't taking no meds and I ain't on no diet. They said, well, whatever it is you're doing, just keep doing that. I said, okay. I said, okay, we will. I make more doctors mad about that. They said, they're just, they don't believe in God at all. They're just atheist-minded. And I go tell them about the power of God, touch my body, and they just get plumb upset. Plumb, they get all upset. But the Lord, in verse 11, desires there to be a work of faith with power and might in your life. And he said, pray to that end. Make that part of your prayer life. And if you feel like you've got enough faith and power working in your life, pray it for me. So that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified. It's when people saw the dead being raised. People saw the maimed being made whole and the, and, the, and the blind eyes opening and the deaf ears opening and the, and, the, and the dumb able to speak and the devil's cast. When people saw that, they glorified. Yes. They glorified Christ and they glorified the, you know, the Father. Yeah. That's what brings glory to the Lord. Amen. Incorporate that into your prayer life. Hallelujah. It glorifies the name. We're looking at the name in Psalm chapter 20. That name is my defense, the Bible says. Hallelujah. Verse 6 again, it says, no, I, now, now know I that the Lord saves His anointed and will, and, and will hear from, the, from His holy heaven with His saving strength of His right hand. That would be, that'd be the Lord Jesus. He ascended to heaven and sat down at the right hand of the Father. Did you not? Amen. Verse 7. Look at verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember. That's the title of this, this message. I will remember. We will remember the name of the Lord our God. Yes. Just because hell showed up doesn't mean hell has to show out. You know that? Amen. You can just fight with it till you wear yourself out, but if you ever just stop just a minute, take a step back and get a hold of the name. Yes. Yes. In Jesus' name. Devil, yes. you understand me. In Jesus' name. You're not doing that stuff here, and you can just forget that right now. You're not putting that sickness in here. You're not putting that fear in here. You're not putting that manifestation of your stuff in here. You can just forget that right now in Jesus' name. I've told it before, but one night we was in this little room back here. One night, all was quiet. And Derek, all of a sudden, if somebody took a board about that long, I took a one before, just a one before. You don't know what that is? About that thick, about that long? Four inches, a one before. And went in that kitchen and just went to wham right on that little island counter in there. Y'all know what that would sound like. Somebody hit it from Michael Todd, just wham. Um, I'm up there, man. I, I thought, there's not anything in the kitchen that goes to wham. What was that? And I went, I went down and looked around and there was nothing in there that you could see that would cause such a thing. And right here from the sanctuary, they started rising up. I said, devil, you're not doing that here. You can forget that right now. In Jesus' name, you take your kawam and get out of here. Yeah. But folks, that's, that's how you make the name work. You make it work first in your living room. Yes. And then you take it out the door. Yes. Yeah. Amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. You, you, you take that when you get in your automobile going to, your automobile going to the highway. I mean, you hear all the wrecks and the accidents and the drunk run with this and the semi-truck did that. And I mean, just... All kinds of crazy stuff out there. Just get into a car and say, devil, you're not doing that here. You can forget that right now. You understand me? In Jesus' name, I'm going to wherever it is I'm going. And then you tell your car to take you there. Amen. I drove a truck for 30 years. And not every time, but just most of the time. I, I sit down in that truck. 
and I have a little talk with that truck. Me and Jesus is already on talking terms. I mean, he's already for me and not against me, so I know his mindset about the whole thing. They were <laughs> red trucks in American Freightway. They sold out to FedEx or all white now, most of them. But I'm sitting there in that truck. I say, red truck, in the name of Jesus, you take me to Little Rock. You'll stand out. And here I'd go. Snow knee deep, front bumper pushing snow. <laughs> Pulling two trailers back there. And I'm thinking, oh, dear God, I hope the name works tonight. <laughs> But I can't tell you the times that that name has took me out and brought me back when everybody else is in a water ditch. I can't tell you the times that happened. One particular night I went through Clinton, Arkansas, and the front bumper was pushing snow. It was a deep snow. I'm telling you, it was a big, big deal. <coughs> I got on down south of there to Damascus, Arkansas, not far south of there. And uh, I think it's south of it, I forgot now. But anyway, Damascus. And about six or seven American Freightway trucks in the water ditch and tow trucks were pulling out trying to get back on the road. And they knew who I was when they seen me. I mean, they all, they all knew me out there. They just, they just knew my truck, truck number. And uh, my secret CD code name was Abraham. And so they thought, hey, Abraham, what's that road look like back behind you? And I said, what you see is what you get all the way to Harrison. Well, we're going to go up here and call dispatch them. We can't make it. I said, well, whatever, I got to go to Little Rock, be back a little bit. There's going to be this Little Rock at night, come back. So they went up the road a little ways, they got to the telephone, and they called dispatch out there at Harrison. And the first thing dispatch asked them was, Did you see Johnson down there anywhere? They said, Yeah, he just passed going on Little Rock near Damascus. And they said, If he can go down, you can come up. And so they forced him to drive that truck. But they didn't have no faith getting him through it like I did. <laughs> so I went down Little Rock. Dropped that trailer, rehooked him, got right back to Harrison. I got up there just north of Clinton, and there that same bunch was tow truck pulling out of the water ditch again on Clinton Hill down there. Pretty steep hill. Oh, not Clinton Hill, it's up there north of Clinton. And uh, I just weaving in and out of the tow trucks and the trucks and all this sort of thing, and drinking one of them keyed up, and they said, Abraham, how are you doing that? I said, hey, fellas, this is Abraham you talking to. Me and God going to the house. You guys stay all night if you want to. <laughs> Well, that's not the way to make friends with influence people. That's, that's what I said to them. <laughs> but it's just that sort of thing. For years, I used the name. I said, truck, you take me home. And then I talked to that truck just like it was ignoring me. I said, you hear me? You, you take me home. I was coming back from Conway one day. Again, I was driving an MLA oil company. I had another load of gas. And I just come across Buffalo River Bridge, but down there at Gilbert before they widened the road out. It's all widened out now, new bridge in there, but it was a skinny deal. And a lot of trucks travel that road, they don't still do, but so I'm coming this way, just across Buffalo, and I come around one of them little, one of them sharp curves, and that truck died right in the middle of that road. Just a blind curve. And I'm sitting there just grinding away on that starter, grinding away, just knowing it's gonna be a Arkansas best freight or some other, you know. Some other freight company will come around and just, because they couldn't miss me. If somebody was coming, they couldn't have stopped if they wanted to because it's just such a sharp curve. I jumped out and I ran that curve, put them flares out, those triangles, you know, just so maybe somebody see that and just, like something going on around that curve, you know. And I run back up and got in that truck and I'm just grinding, rum, 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 and nothing was starting. And right in the middle of that, I happened to think of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. I thought, well, I got something dead here and it needs to be raised. <laughs> <laughs> and so <clears throat> I said, uh, it's, a, it's a KW truck or something. I said, KW, I don't know if you know it or not, but you've got a new name. I'm talking to this truck. Jesus talked to a tree, did he not? Yes. He talked to wind, he talked to water. Yes. I mean, he talked to all kinds of things. He talked to dead bodies. And so I said, truck, I, don't, I mean, I'm getting kind of loud about it. I don't know if you know it or not. You got a new name. I said, your name is Lazarus. You understand that? It was just as loud as I could bail it out there because Jesus with a loud voice said, Lazarus, come forth. And with a loud I brought the dust off the inside that windshield. With a loud as I could holler it out there, I said, Lazarus, in Jesus' name, you come forth. And I hit that button and it turned a half around and fired up. I put it gear and went to Harrison. I gave them flares to somebody else. <laughs> but me and the Lord raised the dead right there beside that road. Yes. Amen. The name is just a pretty good thing to have. Yeah. If you're fixing to get killed out there somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Come on, guys. He'll raise a truck from the dead. He'll, he'll, he'll bake your cake and 
Whatever else you need done. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of our God. Yeah. Now listen, if you want to hitch a ride on a chariot, that's all right. If you, know, if, if you want to, listen, a chariot will only take you so far. I mean, the wheels are going to come off, and just and after a while, the horse is going to lay down. Isn't that right? I mean, just enjoy the ride best you can, but what are you going to do when all that falls apart on you? Don't forget the name. Yeah. Remember the name. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And then act like you remember the name. Not as knee, she couldn't walk on without crutches. We we'll take care of this Charlie Golden Mountain over here. And one day she got over on that mountain, knee all messed up, couldn't walk for nothing hardly on that thing. And then she got mad. She said, Devil, I'm healed. And I just want you to know I'm healed. And I'm going to show you I'm healed. And she, I don't know if you took the crutches with you or not, but she walked plumped off that Charlie Golden Mountain through the, over big rocks, through the trees. I mean, there's no way. It's just rough in her. I've been in there. <laughs> been walking on that leg ever since. Jesus. Do you believe in the name or not? Amen. Has the name lost its strength? No. Glory to God. Somebody asked me down here at the store one time. How you, how's the world treating you? I've just come out of one of them weird church services. And each smart to talk to a Pentecostal preacher right after he gets out of church. <laughs> yeah. Go hear something weird come out of him. I said, in Jesus' name, this world does just what I tell it to. <laughs> I said, I got this world by the hair, and it does just what I tell it to. <laughs> well, there's a hush fell over the crowd. You know, everybody looked like a weird one, kind of backing up, hunting for the door. I knew they weren't going to understand that. You can trust in this world's means if you like. And there's a lot of good things in this world to, you know, have some confidence in. them. I mean, we drive our automobiles 65, 70 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour. You got some confidence in that thing, you wouldn't do that. And that's fine. But, you know, if you just had to go somewhere or another and didn't have no way getting there, the name will get you there. Yes. Yes. One way or the other, the name of Jesus will take you where you want to go. We had a freezer. I told it, but I just like telling it again. We had a freezer go out down here, and we had to have another freezer. I mean, you got several hundred dollars worth of stuff in that freezer and, and that dead and I, I look it's some war out in the old there's no sense trying to fix it well the Bible says seek and you'll find y'all remember reading that seek and you'll find I told Nana I said we're going seeking and we had zero dollars to buy a freezer with if we found it but the Lord didn't say seek and you'll find if you got enough money you can have it that wasn't even part of the statement. He said, just seek and you'll find. And so we just loaded up and took off to Harrison. We gone seeking. And I can't tell you why we did what we did, but we went just straight to Catfish Wharf, which was in business at that time, if you know where that is. It's Jamie's and then Jamie's out of business. And I, don't know, I guess it's ever closed now. But why we went there, I don't know why we went there. And just as we pulled up in the parking lot, there was this couple coming out of it that we knew. And so we had this little parking lot revival. We're just out there preaching one day. You know, just, they're, they're good brothers and sisters in the Lord. So we're just having a, having a moment. And directly they said, well, what are y'all doing in town today? I said, well, a freezer died. We're out there trying to find one. He said, well, <clears throat> me and my wife, we got to go. And they said somewhere or another. I don't know. But they said, you know where we live. I said, yeah. He said, on the back porch, they said, good one. Go over and get it. You can have it. <laughs> I said, no, I won't receive charity. <laughs> That's not what I said. <laughs> I was reaching for the door handle on the truck when he said it. I'm going to Bourbon. That's where he lived. You know? So we went around back. Sure enough, there that freezer was. And I guess it's still down there. I don't know. But uh, it served us for a long time. Didn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. We needed a cooler. High cooler? What do you call them things? I don't know. We need one of them coolers. I'm upright coolers, you know. And we didn't have one. No dollars to buy one. But we needed one. I thought, well, that worked pretty good for a freezer. I said, here we go. We'll go seeking a cooler. And we took off. Went to Harrison. Praise Next thing I know, I'm standing right in the front office of the Pepsi-Cola company out there. And I said, y'all got coolers out here that, uh, uh, that you want to, that I could buy? You know, how it worked? I said, uh, Buy, sale, or give away. Some weird something like that. 
They said, no, we don't have no cooler out here for you to have. They said, way back here, they used to do that for cafe, but they don't do that anymore. I said, okay, thank you very much. And so I made about two good steps toward the door to leave, and this fellow, I think maybe she called us back or something. I don't know what it was. Anyway, this, she said, go back, go back here in the back and talk to this guy. He had an office back there. And so she called him, and he knew we were coming back there, and so we meandered around until we got back to his office. And we just sat there and talked about football, basketball, and the whole world, and this, that, and the other thing, and then we got around to that cooler thing. And here's what he said. He said, it's, he said this is not actually breaking the rules. He said just kind of bending them a little bit. He said, we used to give coolers away like that, loan them to, to, to restaurants, but he said, we've not done that. We quit. The, we don't have that policy. But he said, I'll tell you what, he said, there's one runner over there leaning percent up against the wall. He said, it's a brand new one, never been used. He said, just get that and take it home with you. <laughs> I said, no, I don't believe in taking charity. <laughs> I didn't say that either. We loaded that little rascal up, and it's just been about three, four months ago, I don't know, six months ago, that they come and got it, because we've not been in the cafe for a long time, and uh, they finally come and got it, but it's down there for years. Use the name, guys. Use the name. Come in this world to yield you what you need. Address it in the name of the Lord, because this world still remembers. The Bible says Satan is God of this world system, but when you use the name, that, that part, I mean the Red Sea parts, the, 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 the darkness of the devil parts. Yeah. Yeah, Glory to God. Hallelujah. We will remember the name. Yes. They knew the benefit of it in the Old Testament. And we should remember the name of God as well. All they were working with was El Shaddai. I don't know. There were several other Old Testament names for God. But we got a better covenant established on better promises. Amen. Amen. Yes. We got the name of somebody called Jesus. Yes. Disease still remembers. Devils, they still remember. You can struggle with this life in your own power and your own strength and all you're going to do is wear yourself out. But if you're going to put that kind of energy out, put it out using the name. Amen? Yes. Amen. Sure. Glory to God. Jesus. Blessed be God. Thank you, Lord. Verse 8, they, they are brought down and, and have fallen, but we are risen. <laughs> we are risen and we stand upright. Glory to God. Say, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. And he does, because he's in the sanctuary. He's on the inside of you tonight. Amen. Amen. In the Proverbs chapter 18. If you would. Folks, this is the Word of God we're looking at. It's God's Word. It's God talking. It's impossible for God to lie. I told folks for years, I said, you know, there's three verses. God's not a man that he should lie, nor the Son of a man that he should repent. What he said he'll do. When you find that in number 23, 19, God's not a man that he should lie. Titus chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, it's impossible. God cannot lie. By the time you get to Hebrews 18, it's impossible for God to lie. you got three verses in the Bible that tells you God can't lie, okay? And so if you find a thus saith the Lord, if you find a God said, we ought to just relax. I've had the Lord just point it out to me. The doctor said, well, you're good shape. Ain't nothing wrong with your body. And I'm going, hmm. <laughs> and the Lord said, why do you have, you know, more... Uh, Relaxing in what he said and what I said. How come you don't do that when I tell you you're doing all right? And I've had to redo my, I had to rethink the whole thing. I mean, that doctor could be wrong. All him and his wife's got to do is have a big argument, a big fight before he comes to work. He could get it all mixed up the time he got to me. I'm not sure it's a wife, fight with his wife that did it, but he's got it all mixed up with me a time or two, and I've got to figure out what was he saying here, anyhow. 
You want me two different prescriptions? I thought, well, I don't need either one of them. You wrote me one one day, and I still don't throw it in the trash. I thought, fool, you ain't taking that stuff. He said he'd kill me if I took it with that little, 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 little piece of paper they gave me. You have a heart attack if you take this, but it'll fix everything else. So I just don't really. You know Proverbs 18? Look at verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into And is safe. Uh, I'll just answer it for you. If you're born again and you're, you're here tonight and you're born, you're, you're the righteousness of God. I mean, just read 2 Corinthians 5, 21. <laughs> Jesus, who knew no sin, was made to be sin, that you and I might be made the righteousness of God. And so when the world does its deal, we just run to the name. We just run to the name. Hallelujah. I'm going to never forget that. I don't think I'm going to forget that testament that Brother Copeland told one time. He just a kid. He's in a little store or somewhere. Or another. I don't know where it was at. But as, as a young child, he got to mess around with something somebody else had in there in that store. I don't know what it was. But the, the guy that owned that other thing, whatever it was, got really mad at Copeland and just made all his threats of one kind or another. And, and, and uh, uh, directly he heard his daddy's voice back here. He said, he's run back there and got around behind him, and his daddy said, you talking to that kid, you're talking to me. And, he's, and, and his dad told him what he was going to do if he didn't leave his kid alone. And Copeland said, he stuck his head out behind his dad. said, yeah, go for your cat and your dog, too. <laughs> <laughs> he got real brave behind daddy, you know. But he ran to the name, the name of his daddy. <laughs> he ran to that, and then turned around and looked at what was trying to get him. You know me? Come to my daddy, you can have me. <laughs> I tell the devil this on a regular basis. I said, listen, turkey, I said, change the word and you've got me, but you can't and you mean. Take proper English, but he understands. Amen. Change the word and you got me. There's an amen in that somewhere, God. Amen. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. A strong tower, hallelujah. And the righteous run into it. And they are safe. I got a whole message on that tower thing. We'll get to it again one of these days, maybe, but Bless the Lord. Glory to God. I think I'll make this work right here. Look at Isaiah chapter 24. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 14. It says, They shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. Verse 15. Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. Now for whatever else is going on in that verse, it says, glorify ye the Lord in the fires. Did not say that? Yes. Well, I don't plan on getting in no fire. But you never know, an actual fire may show up sometime. But that aside, look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. Glory to God. The news talks so many times about so many people suffering from such great disasters of one kind or another. And many of them are good Christian people. I mean, they're born again. they they got a relationship with the Lord. I mean, I've not experienced some of the problems that they've had to go through with. But I, I, I see troubles on the news and how, you know, the fire burnt the whole house down. Or some other crazy thing happened to them. And I think, has anybody ever told them about the name? About the name of Christ the King? Did I say First Peter? Mm -hmm. You all just hold on to that. I'm getting there. First Peter chapter 4. Glory to God. Verse uh, 12 and 13. Beloved, that's you and I, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when the glory shall be revealed, he may be uh, glad also with exceeding joy. Now there's, there's some things in this life that, that uh, the Bible really doesn't give you a means of 
really rebuking the name or no name. And it's called, all that live God in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. In fact, you find a verse that says you're appointed to it. Okay. But where anything else is concerned, I mean, when some fiery trials show up, we got a right to glorify God in the fire by using the name. Amen? Amen. Bless the Lord. It just, well, it makes sense to me. It speaks to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, I won't hold you much longer, but go into John chapter 3, and certainly verse 16. Thank you, Lord. Verse 16 says, You know the verse, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Your Bible say that? <laughs> verse 17, For God sent not His Son in the world to condemn the world, uh, uh, but that the world through Him might be saved. Let me just take a little side trip while I'm on that text. Kenneth Hagin told this years ago. He said that there's a lot of, a lot of crazy sins that you can think about in this world. Probably maybe some of you have been involved in them, he said. But he said probably one of the most, you know, ungodly things that anybody can involve herself in is homosexuality. And, you know, human nature, at least where Christianity is concerned, if we can say it that way, they, you know, they, they look narrowly on that, they condemn that, and, you know, and they just think bad things about that. And it's really not good at all. But here's what he said. He said, Jesus is not condemning them. Why should you? He's not condemning the homosexual. He certainly is condemning the act, I mean, the, the homosexuality. He condemns that. But we tie people to the sin, and while we have disgust for the sin, if you're not careful, you start having disgust for the people. Jesus comes to save them people. He comes to save those people. Yeah. And he's not condemning them. His blood has already paid the penalty for that sin. Yes. The sin that's going to condemn them to hell is their rejection of Jesus. Right. Hallelujah. No, he doesn't endorse that. He doesn't like that. Nobody ought to like that. Kenneth Copeland said, that's the worst lie the devil ever sold anybody with hormones. <laughs> For God sent not his son in the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We read all the above, get to verse 18. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already because, and why because? Because he has not believed in the name. In the name of the only begotten Son of God. By the way, in, in, in John's writings, Jesus is, is, is just titled as the only begotten Son of God. You can read that over and over. Okay, the only begotten Son of God. That changed after Pentecost. Mm -hmm. After Pentecost, the day of Pentecost, he's not the only begotten Son. Uh, he's the firstborn. Yeah. And if there's a firstborn, there's got to be a secondborn. And some more another Sister Jill's in there. Her number's in there. Sister Hazel, your number's in there somewhere, though. Yes. Right. I don't know what my number is, but it's in there. Yes. Jesus was just number one. Mm -hmm. He's not the only begotten because I've been begotten. Amen. Got a testimony concerning it, and so are you if you're born again. Amen? Amen. But if that name Jesus can make a new creature out of you on the inside, he can fix what's broken on the outside. Bless the Lord. Blessed be God. We're in the book of John, but look at John chapter 20. I'm trying to hurry, guys. I'm, I'm not going to get through everything I've got up here. I just, I just need to look at another thing to hear me. We'll close. John chapter 20. Hallelujah. Verse 24. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm not going to read all I have wrote down here. Look at verse 30. He said, Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are, are not written in this book. Kind of makes you wonder why they didn't write them in the book. <laughs> like know what they were, wouldn't you? Verse 31. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God, that believing you might have life through His name. 
that name produces life. Yes. Mr. Sumrall said, if you're sick a little bit, you're dead a little bit. You get sick enough, we bury you. Well, if the name brings life, just use the name when you're sick a little bit. Or how sick you might be, just bring the name in and put life into that where death is trying to work. That makes sense, y'all? Y'all understand it? Just bring the name over here and use it where death is trying to work. Yes, amen. Remember the name, David said. Glory to God. One last text. Goodness, we could spend a while on this, but look at Psalm 75. We'll close with this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You found Psalm 75? Say amen. Verse 1. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. His wondrous works declares that his name is near. His word declares his name is near. I have a witness on the inside of me that his name is near. Amen. Amen. The wondrous works declare that his name is near. You start using the name on devils. You start using the name on disease. You start using the name on the works of darkness. The works of God begin to develop and they'll declare that that name is near. Amen. The Bible tells you and I not to forget those wondrous works. Not to forget them. The Word of God tells you to remember them and to talk about them. To remember his wondrous works. And the reason that says so much to me is that in you know, my spiritual growth growing up, there was, there was a certain group of people, they'd go out of their way to come see me and tell me how crazy I was for believing in tongues. Because I believed in healing. Because I believed in the miracles of God. Because they didn't believe that. But the Bible says, talk of his works, talk of his wondrous doings. And we've been studying here lately in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. It says, this, this, this wonder working power of God is, is, is unto a thousand generations. Yes. Well, you can do the math. It's on your own. I mean, how, how long is a generation? I mean, on the low end, 50 years. I mean, just knowing everybody lives longer than 50 years. The old Apostle John, he lived to be somewhere around 100 plus, somewhere around 100, 205, I think it was. So that's 100,000 years. 50 to 100,000 years, he said, he'll keep covenant and mercy with them that love him for a, a thousand generations. Well, we've not used a, a fraction of that time where God's miracle work and power is concerned. He's still doing it today, guys. Amen. But he's listening for the name. Yeah. Amen. The devil trembles when we do. Amen. Don't get anything out of this now. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm just glad I come my hair and come to church tonight, ain't you? Amen. Bless the Lord. Those of you viewing by the internet or by DVD, we are Mount Judea Christian Center. We're Pastor Gary Nine and Johnson. And if you just happen to decide you might want to go to heaven instead of hell, <laughs> somewhere or another, Jesus Christ has got to get involved in your life. Mohammed ain't going to help you. Buddha, you can go over and find his bones today, but you can't find the bones of the living Christ because he's raised from the dead. And he's gone to heaven and he sits at the right hand of Almighty God making intercession for the saints. Hallelujah. Amen. No other name under heaven given unto men, uh, given unto men whereby we must be saved, but by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. It, it's not complicated. It won't take about 60 seconds. Just repent of that crazy life you've been living. Tell God you're a sinner and you want to be saved. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lordship of Jesus Christ over you, God who cannot lie said you shall be saved. Jesus said it this way, confess him before men and he confess you before the Father. Amen. Pretty simple. Don't take long. <coughs> Hallelujah. The Word says he stands at the door of your heart and knocks. All you got to do is just invite him in. He comes by invitation. You have to invite him in. Accept him and he'll accept you. That's if you want to go to heaven. If you want to go to hell, don't do anything. You'll get there. Hallelujah. 
Our number, our phone number is one 434 And if you just need to call somebody, call that number. Talk to us. We'd be glad to talk with you. Lead you in prayer. Pray with you. And we have materials that we'd love to uh, you know, send you that, that, that'll help you in, in, in your in your salvation. It'll cost you nothing. We we'll pay the postage, but Jesus loves you. Yeah. He emptied his veins of his blood to prove that. Mm -hmm. All you gotta do is accept him as your Lord and your Savior. That's all he's asking. Till next time, God bless. Amen.